Yo, what's up? Bob here. Welcome to Vinyl Finds on the Bob Bradley YouTube channel. This is number 37. That's right, folks. 37. I've been out hunting like a madman. Um, there's so much we could talk about. <sighs> One of the places that I get records got a bunch of sealed records um, sometime early in the week. And I was there for it. I, I went over there and I looked through them and I passed on the majority of the stuff. Then another buddy of mine bought some of them, sold them for big money. Some, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, when I'm flipping and I see Mariah Carey and Janet Jackson, stuff like that, I don't always go, oh, I got to get that, you know, but... I should have known better. There was even a Procol Harum uh, record that was sealed that I think he ended up selling for like a hundred bucks. So, what are you gonna do? That said, I did find a lot of great records this week, and we are gonna get into them. We got a lot to discuss. Um, first off, thanks to everyone who watched the video with me and Jeffrey Lee Puckett. Me and Jeff have been talking and. Um, we are going to do some more videos together. We think we have some um, pretty good ideas for uh, some content that um, would be pretty, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, if you if you're not that familiar with Jeffrey Lee Puckett, just Google him. Uh, he's been writing about music mostly for years and years and years. He's got tons of stuff on the internet. Uh, he even does a little writing for Discogs, actually, uh, and um, great guy, super knowledgeable, uh, vast record collection, nice, very nice stereo, um, yeah, yeah, super cool dude. <clears throat> so we are going to do some more videos with Jeffrey. Um, also have some other guests I'm going to have on the channel. Really excited about that. So, I will have some compelling content coming in the future. Now, as for records I found this week, let's get into it. Let's get let's get deep into it. First of all, okay. Let's before we get into the full size stuff, okay. It's gonna get this is gonna get wild. I was in a secondhand shop, and unfortunately, some poor soul had to sell his seven-inch collection. Now, these are mostly all local, um, like hardcore, from the Louisville area, and so I'm not going to do the tedious task of showing you every all this okay because they're they're mostly local bands from this area and i my strategy on this was to um kind of buy most of the collection and pick the ones of people i know or stuff that i um really liked and uh trade the rest because you know in a local record store pe there's some of these bands have um Followings. Most of these are date from around 90, 1990 to about 1995-ish. So uh, I'll just show some ones that I thought were really cool real quick. And um, whatever. Here's one. Rodan. This was a pretty awesome band around town here. Really neat. Crane. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is just a little... Uh, Louisville is for lovers. Uh, seven inch here. Got a couple tunes from the DeLoreans and Scott Carney. Uh, this is not a Louisville band. I think these guys, I don't know where these guys are. Uh, St. Louis, maybe. Uh, the Union Electric. I thought that was cool. Got it. Dollar. John Glenn Wood and the Natural Geographic. I know Jonathan. I know Jonathan. He's been, uh, 
He's been he was in the featured in the vlog before playing music. Uh, Metro Shifter Mario from Earthless is on drums in that band. Uh, another uh, one of these uh, split seven inches falling forward Metro Shifter. Elliot. Elliot. Uh, another split series Furlong and Anderson. Hedge blank. Yeah. Another blank. That's B L A N G K. Uh, Palace. And the Groovy Ghouls. Uh, this is from out of town, too. But those are the ones that I chose to keep. Um, I had to leave some good stuff in here just because, uh, basically, the collection wouldn't have a whole lot of value if I just picked it over and took all the good stuff. So, <clears throat> moving right along with great vigor... Let's get into the full-size LPs. I've wasted enough time. It's already been six minutes, for crying out loud. Okay. Coming right out of the gate. Super hard. Bam. No effects. Uh, the longest line. This is uh, kind of a... I don't know what's, uh, what you would call this. Uh, I guess maybe an EP. In um, 40, 45 RPM. Uh, Kill All the White Men is on here. Uh, you know, the the death of John Smith. The Longest Line, Stranded. Uh, this is a really cool cover. It's got all these different people. You got Hendrix here. Um, Castro. Elvis. The Devil. Um, looks like uh, Patty Hearst up here. Uh, there's a there's that dude with all the tattoos that you see all the time. I mean, really cool. Charlie Chaplin. Neat cover, very neat cover. In 45 RPM, really cool. Big No Effects fan, you know this if you've watched the channel before. When I find the stuff, I buy it. Um, check this out. Ba bam, fifteen, fifteen dollars. This is sealed from Record Store Day. Um. This is on colored vinyl. I haven't opened it yet. I am going to open this because I love Tom Waits. And yeah, I'm going to listen to it. So this is, a, I believe it's on like a gray marble. And I had seen this many times and didn't want to pay up for it. Uh, it me and Jeff were looking at the same copy at the same uh, little record spot and passing on it over and over again because it was too expensive. So when I saw this for $15, I had to get it. Super stoked on that, by the way. And uh, <clears throat> was happy. I was on Instagram. See how I, that was a segue. I was on Instagram and a local record shop was posting some clean records that they had just received and I thought yeah I, I need to go take a look at those and uh, what I was mostly uh, well they had a, they had some uh, ZZ really clean ZZ top stuff I went there um, the Trace Hombres they had wasn't quite as clean as mine and the uh, Rio Grande mud was a little bit injured there at the bottom so I passed on it but but they did have this Bam, King Crimson Islands. Look at this. Look at how clean this is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the Atlantic label. Um, yeah, you know what this is like. It's kind of like, you know, it's King Crimson. There's kind of some... Um, the side two is really cool, kind of a lot of quiet music and stuff. So it was important to me to have a clean, clean copy of this because, you know, if there's a lot of quiet music, uh, it's just going to be, you know, cracking and popping and carrying on. I can't have that. That's ridiculous. So, yes, probably the cleanest copy of Islands I've ever seen. Um... Boom, in the wake of Poseidon. This is a little, uh, this is pretty clean, even still. Very, very clean. Uh, not as clean as that, but but very clean. Same deal. Boom, Atlantic label. 
uh, you know, looking for that clean copy so that it doesn't uh, interrupt my listening experience, trying to be kind to my ears here, folks. Uh, you know, what can you say about King Crimson that hasn't already been said except for get their records? Boom. Roxy Music. That's right. Stranded. Uh, obviously, another stunning cover. Boom. On Atco. Incredible. Incredibly clean. Uh, I'm still looking for uh, just the cover to Sirens because I have the record in a, in a straight up Roxy Music cover. It's right there. Right, right there. And, you know, um, the Sirens record, it, I have it and I, I just need a, I just need a cover for it. So, yeah, Roxy Music. I believe they uh, maybe just got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, next. Boom, check out this. The cl clean, 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 minty, fresh flavor. Um, that's right. Frippin' Eno. No pussy footing. Uh, <laughs> this is great, great uh, record. As you can see, there's some... Um, Looks like there's some cards, nudie cards down here, and um, you know, whatnot. Very uh, compelling cover there. It's on my favorite, one of my favorite looking labels. Boom, the island label with the pink eye. Very cool. Pink eye? Ooh, the pink eye for island. Uh, very cool. This is, of course, um, Robert Fripp is doing his thing big time. Uh, I've, I've determined that you could probably listen to this at 33 and 45 and it'd still be pretty awesome. Um, you know, I'm a guitar player. I'm, I, I like it when dudes just go <laughs> a lot. So this, I really love this. If you're into ambient music, obviously you need to get into Eno, uh, but you also need to get the uh, Frippin' Eno records. Yeah. Booyah. Thin White Duke. David Bowie, Station to Station. Uh, talk about an epic track. Um, Station to Station. I mean, they really set that sucker up. I mean, they're sitting there playing that groove for about like a minute or so before uh, David ever even opens his mouth. And when he does, it is freaking epic. You know, it's it's so, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, Golden Years obviously is on this. Very clean on this gold RCA hitter. Really cool. Glad to have this. Um... Let's talk Bowie. Oh yeah, Space Oddity. Uh, yeah, look at this. Yeah, Let's Dance. Stevie Ray Vaughan on this. Um, Aladdin Sane, epic, iconic cover. Um, yeah, this is so dope. Um, pen ups, yeah. Uh, of course, Ziggy Stardust, the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and the spiders from Mars. Super clean. Uh, watch this. See that? Station to station. Boom. Goes right in there. You may notice there's a lot of space in my records. No, I didn't have a purge. I, um, rearranged some of my records so that I would have more space. Some of, uh, some of the records have gone into the record chasm and as a result I have some more space out here. Next and f last but not least. So a while ago I got this. Sweatband? No. <laughs> Though, very cool record. 
What am I doing here? Okay. Cacao. Uh, maggot brain funkadelic. Now, I got this free. I had bought a... Um, what One Nation Under a Groove, a minty One Nation Under a Groove. Let's see if we can find that real quick. Bam, One Nation Under a Groove, seven inch, etc. Right? And when I bought this, she said, I'll throw this in. I said, okay, cool. This is in terrible condition. That's why she threw it in for free. I didn't have it. It was a bit of a placeholder. And I was like, eh, you know, cool enough. It looks all, I mean, it looks great, right? But the vinyl's in horrible condition. See? See how I have it in a white sleeve? Because it's, it's garbage and it doesn't deserve a mofa. And now, booyah! Yeah, that's right, another maggot brain. Found this one, boom. That's right. On Westbound, in the MoFi, that means it's pretty clean, folks. Um, you know, that's what we call the double maggot brain. Yes, um, super excited to have maggot brain in a listenable format. Some other things I wanted to briefly get into because obviously always have a little bit of guitar action. This is my main axe that I play out with. It's 1965 ES 335. Has three pickups. Um, Gibson guitar you know it's been a lot I mean a lot of discussion about Gibson in the um, internet space this last week because they did a video where they were mad at people for stealing their designs now these instruments are tools to me uh, they I'm, I have Gibson I have Fender um, a lot of this stuff doesn't really apply to me because all my guitars are old vintage guitars. So the people who own and run the companies now are not the same people who made my guitar. A lot of people, you'll see them say, well, you know, it's a bad design. Headstock breaks off. That's because it has this angled headstock, okay? And, you know, it's not quite as uh, dramatic on this 335 as it is on my Les Paul. Let me get that for a moment. Oh, see, well, yeah. So this is a, an angled headstock. And what happens is, is when these guitars fall, boom, they hit the ground, it pops this headstock right off, breaks the neck. Now, everyone's like, well, that's a design flaw, Bob. No, that's not a design flaw. You see, yes, it makes the guitar fragile, but it contributes to the sound and sustain of the instrument. That's why they do it. It's not just for looks. That angled headstock puts more pressure on the string and it makes the guitar sustain longer. That's why it has an angled headstock. It's not a design flaw. It's done on purpose, geniuses. The, yes, the guitar is fragile. Most expensive instruments are fragile. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, a lot of people are comparing these things to fenders, which you can basically toss across the stage and it'll be good forever and ever. I mean, you can break them like I'm banging these two together right now. But the reality of it is fenders much tougher than a Gibson guitar. If you're trying to make your brand um, have a resurgence, which is what Gibson's doing. They recently filed bankruptcy, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you're you're trying to bring it back. They hired the CEO of Levi's, uh, the old CEO of Levi's, rather, who is known for coming in, taking uh, heirloom heritage brands and kind of preserving them. 
And that's um, what he's trying to do. They used Mark Agnesi, which if you don't know, he was, a, he was from Norm's Rare Guitars, been on the Bob Bradley vlog before, um, to make this video about being authentic. Whatever. You know... It is what it is. Uh, I love the guitars. This guitar right here is um, the guitar that I recorded my first record with. Um, it's called Lose It All. Uh, Condors in the System. You can check it out at Condors in the System at Bandcamp. Uh, or you can mosey on over to our Facebook page and give us a like over there. Uh, we're available on all platforms, all streaming services. Have a new record out. <laughs> Condors in the System. Music from the Eagle Nebula check it out uh you know big props to richard riley he's bought both the records lose it all and music from the eagle nebula killing it you know uh, i'll link it at the end of the video i'll put it in the comments below check it out you know got some exciting compelling content coming up hopefully until we meet again. That's right. Bob out. to the 335. This thing is like a piece of folk art. I've shown this on the channel before. It's covered in denim. Uh, speaking of Levi's, vintage Levi there. Uh, there's some patches on a little Grateful Dead thing here. This thing is, I mean, it, it, it really is like some type of folk art. And the uh, person who originally owned this guitar was a touring musician. And uh, they opened for, you know, like, the Bee Gees and some stuff like that. And they had this uh, denim covered case here. I think, uh, you know, they had this custom done, obviously. There's a uh, comb in a pocket. <laughs> but, yeah, 
that that's my uh, this three three five is my number one gigging guitar. So um, a lot of times, if, if you're looking on the channel, seeing me playing out, you'll see me playing this guitar right here. These are the records that I'm looking for right now. I'm looking for a minty band on the run. We've talked about this and. Cheech and Chong's Big Bamboo with the rolling papers. Gotta have it all perfect. If you haven't heard Tommy Chong's interview podcast with Joey Diaz on the Church of What's Happening Now, you should definitely check that out. I will link it below. I will link it in the comments below because it was great. It was great. I love Tommy Chong. He's uh, he's awesome. He's an awesome guy. Um, yeah. Anyway, I gotta go.